Mount Cook, Aorangi the Cloud Piercer. New Zealand's highest mountain lies deep in the heart of the Southern Alps, a range stretching some 700 kilometres along the length of the South Island. These mountains rise almost directly from the sea, just 20 kilometres away, in an almost sheer wall of ridges and peaks reaching to 3,700 metres. More than 28 peaks in this area top the 3,000 metre mark. They make this one of the most spectacular and perhaps most challenging mountain regions in the world. This far south, conditions are extreme. Huge glaciers and ice flows fill the valleys, fed by more than 50 metres of fresh snow every year. They gouge their way seaward, leaving sheer rock faces in a rugged and broken landscape to be battered by the storms that sweep in unchecked off the sea. Yet there is no other region in the world where the mountains are so accessible to those who know how to approach them. Mountaineering history in New Zealand is relatively short. It's only a hundred years since the first mountaineers and guides penetrated this region. And yet today it's one of the world's finest climbing grounds, with a range of challenges within the reach of anyone willing to take the time to learn the basic skills and respect that any climber requires. This is the world of Alpine Guides, a professional climbing school based at Mount Cook Village. The school is staffed by internationally qualified climbers, many of whom have been climbing in this area for more than 12 years, giving them the skills and judgement that the region demands. Nestled at the foot of the tall peaks, Mount Cook Village is a centre of mountaineering in New Zealand. It's also the headquarters of Mount Cook National Park. The park authorities oversee the preservation of the area's natural values and control development. And there's the Hermitage Hotel Complex, providing a comfortable base for expeditions of all kinds. Alpine Guides have been here since 1967. Initially established as a climbing school, Alpine Guides now offer climbing courses and high guiding at any level of expertise. Today, people of all nationalities and all ages pass through their doors. Some are experienced climbers. Others come for formal classes where expert instructors teach snow and mountain craft to any level. Although you find it gets nothing worse after a little while than somebody telling you how to do something. It's good to work it out with yourself. Bouldering in the valley near the village is the ideal way to start, or to warm up while waiting for the weather to clear. The basic technical skills of climbing are more easily practiced here than on the frozen slopes that will be encountered later. Once the time comes to head out, it's possible to fly by ski plane right to the main snow faces, or like this group, take the chance to walk in across the gentle terrain of the Tasman Glacier, picking up the technical skills of ice climbing along the way. Okay, well, this is basically a perfect place to learn how to cramp one up here. Sort of quite a nice walk up, great view. So I reckon we might as well just get into it and put the crampons on first, and then we'll start wandering around and getting a bit used to them. Okay? Great. And what we've got is we've got a left and a right crampon. Okay, and crampons up. Quite important when you're cramponing, you know, on a, on, on a mountain or an actual climb to keep checking your crampons. Right. Because they do loosen up, they can occasionally come right off your boot, which would be a bit drastic, obviously. So I think maybe the best thing is if, if you just go ahead and stick ours on, stick yours on, and then we can uh, start walking around on them. 
Okay. Does it go around you? Yeah, just wrap it around your ankle, right around, and then do the same side of it. The importance of ice climbing is paramount in New Zealand, where high precipitation and the resulting glaciation mean most climbs encounter snow and ice. There'll be plenty of chance to practice the basic skills on the wide variety of intermediate slopes that'll be encountered even before the first hut is reached. High mountain huts are maintained throughout the region by the park authorities, even in some of the most remote places. The weather here can change suddenly and dramatically, bringing high mountain storms that would destroy a tent and make a secure refuge vital. But that just adds an extra dimension to the whole experience. Beetham Hut, halfway up the Tasman Valley, is the perfect venue for rock climbing, where the group can learn the importance of such things as belays and anchors, gradually developing the necessary confidence in their equipment and in their own ability. Them, but if you look ahead a bit, you might put one in 10 feet or so to see they have such a, a long fall if you do fall. It's good. Yeah, feel up there. Okay. It's good to be leading. After several days of instruction, the group will move further into the mountains and into ever more challenging terrain. The philosophy of Alpine Guides is one of careful development of skills and judgment, learning that gaining a summit is not a conquest but a privilege and building respect for the often harsh realities of New Zealand mountaineering.
With a little respect, the appropriate help and good luck with the weather, the way opens to the summit of towering peaks and the experience that the Mount Cook region offers. To those with a passion for the mountains, it's a kind of mountaineering supermarket with a vast variety of climbs to choose from. All you have to do is to take your pick. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. Must be the great guiding route. <laughs> joking about the location of the hut, mate. No, it's got a drop or so. Yeah. You've got to be really careful when you uh, go outside around here. The climbing experience available on these mountains is something you'll find nowhere else. This is the climbing experience of the Mount Cook region and Alpine Guides. <laughs> <laughs> 